Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at case checking, proof by exhaustion, examples and then we'll finish with a summary. So how can we use case checking to prove results? We've seen that we can use proof by deduction to turn a conjecture with appropriate axioms into a theorem. We can take our initial conjecture based on some results in particular and apply the process of proof by deduction and turn the conjecture into a theorem. Sometimes a conjecture has to be split into a finite number of cases which have to be checked to be true in order to prove the conjecture. For example, consider our initial conjecture which can be split into say two different cases, case one and case two. There could be more cases but the important thing is that there are a finite number of cases. And then for each one, we can produce a proof of the result. And once you've proved all the cases, you've proved the theorem. In these situations, a general direct proof may not be feasible. Consider that we're asked to prove if n is not a multiple of 3, then n squared isn't either. How would we use proof by deduction in general in order to prove this result? It would be difficult because n could be one more or two more than a multiple of 3 since n is not a multiple of 3, i.e. we have two cases to check. And this is why we check each case separately. And as such, we can systematically check the cases to prove the result, using a process called proof by exhaustion. We use proof by exhaustion in cases where there are finitely many cases to check. We have case 1, case 2, for example, and on and on and on, up to at most case n. This is the finite number of cases and for each case we check whether the result is true or false. So how do we conduct a proof by exhaustion? The method of proving a conjecture using cases is called proof by exhaustion. We take our conjecture, we split the conjecture into cases and then we prove each one i.e. proof by exhaustion of the cases and this gives us our theorem. To begin a proof by exhaustion, we must first separate the situation into cases. As before, we had our situation with n being not a multiple of 3. This gives us two cases. n can be written as 3 multiplied by an integer k plus 1, i.e. 1 more than the multiple of 3, or we have that n can be written as 2 more than a multiple of 3 n can be written as 3k plus 2. We can then check each case against the conjecture. We've been asked to show in this example that n squared is not a multiple of 3. So we take our first case and consider n squared. Our first case is that n is equal to 3k plus 1. So n squared is going to be 3k plus 1 all squared. We can expand this out and we'll get 9k squared plus 6k plus 1. And then we can try and factorise to have a multiple of 3. In particular, we can have 3 lots of 3k squared plus 2k. And then we have the plus 1 on the end. Similarly, in the second case, we have our n squared is equal to 3k plus 2 all squared. This again we can expand as 9k squared plus 12k plus 4. And we can factor out as much of multiple of 3 as we can and we'll have a 3 multiplied by 3k squared and then plus 4k plus 1 and then we have a plus 1 on the end. This means splitting the 4 into 3 times 1 plus 1. In both of these cases we have our result being a multiple of 3 plus 1 because if k is an integer then these expressions 3k squared plus 2k and 3k squared plus 4k plus 1 are also integers. So these expressions are definitely exactly one more than a multiple of 3, and in particular, not a multiple of 3. So once that we have checked all the cases that are possible, we are done. We have our initial assumption, n is not a multiple of 3, which is split into cases. And in either case, we have the deduction that n squared is also not a multiple of 3 because in both cases it works. 
and therefore we have proved our conjecture into a theorem. Checking cases has the advantage of providing extra information over the general situation. We take our overall statement, n is not a multiple of 3, and we can split into two cases, namely n is 1 more than a multiple of 3, or n is 2 more than a multiple of 3, and these give us extra information in each case. And this is useful since there are only two ways that n could not be a multiple of 3, or at least there are finitely many cases to check. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to prove that n plus 1 all cubed is greater than or equal to 3 to the power of n, for n in n with n less than or equal to 4, by exhausting all of the possible cases. Our first step is to split the situation into cases. We have that n is a natural number, so n is in the natural numbers, but also that n is less than or equal to 4. Therefore we only have 4 cases, namely n equals 1, or n equals 2, or n equals 3, or n equals 4. Our second step is to check the first case. We start with the case n is equal to 1. We look at both sides of our expression, namely n plus 1 all cubed, which is 1 plus 1 all cubed. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we have 2 cubed, and this is equal to 8. And the other side of the expression is 3 to the power of n, so we have 3 to the power of 1, which is equal to 3. Therefore, our 1 plus 1 all cubed, which is equal to 8, is indeed greater than or equal to 3, which is equal to 3 to the power of 1. So the conjecture is true for the case n equals 1. Our third step is to check the second case. Here we have n is equal to 2. We look at 2 plus 1 all cubed. 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, so we have 3 cubed, and this is equal to 27. Similarly, we have 3 to the power of 2, which is n. This is equal to 9. And therefore, our 2 plus 1 all cubed, which is equal to 27, is greater than or equal to 9, which is equal to 3 squared. Our fourth step is to check the third case. Here we have n is equal to 3. We have our 3 plus 1 all cubed on the left-hand side, which is equal to 4 cubed, which is equal to 64. On the right-hand side, we have 3 to the power of 3, which is n, and this is equal to 27. Therefore, our 3 plus 1 all cubed, which is equal to 64, is indeed greater than or equal to 27, which is equal to 3 cubed. Our fifth step is to check the fourth case. Here we have n is equal to 4. We have our 4 plus 1 all cubed, this is equal to 5 cubed, which is equal to 125. Then we also have our 3 to the power of 4, and this is equal to 81. And therefore, again, 4 plus 1 all cubed, which is equal to 125, is greater than or equal to 81, which is equal to 3 to the power of 4. Our last step is to state the conclusion. Our conclusion is that n plus 1 all cubed is greater than or equal to 3 to the power of n. And in particular, we've shown this for n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. And therefore, we can deduce that our inequality n plus 1 all cubed is greater than or equal to 3 to the power of n for our conditions n in n and n is less than or equal to 4. Therefore, we have proven our conjecture. Our second example asks us to prove by exhaustion that within the set of natural numbers less than or equal to 49, there are more prime numbers than square numbers. Our first step is to write down all the primes less than or equal to 49. The relevant primes are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, and 47. Our second step is to write down the number of primes. And when we count them up, we are going to get 15 primes in this set. Our third step is to write down all of the squares less than or equal to 49. The square numbers in this set are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and 49. 
Our fourth step is to write down the number of squares. If we count, we can see that there are precisely seven squares. Our fifth step is to compare the number of primes to the number of squares in this set. We have the number of primes 15 is strictly greater than 7. Our last step is to write down the conclusion. The conclusion is that there are more primes than squares less than or equal to 49. Therefore, we have proved our conjecture. Our last example asks us to prove that n cubed minus n is divisible by 3, first by exhaustion and then by deduction. Our first step is to split into cases. We can split n into three different cases, namely n is a multiple of 3, n is one more than a multiple of 3, and n is two more than a multiple of 3. Splitting it into these three cases is useful because the question has divisibility by 3 in it. Our second step is to write the cases equivalently with algebra. We have our three cases. Case 1 is that n is equal to 3k, i.e. that n is a multiple of 3. Case 2 is that n is equal to 3k plus 1, i.e. n is one more than a multiple of 3. And our last case is n is equal to 3k plus 2, i.e. n is two more than a multiple of 3. Our third step is to check the first case. Our expression to examine is n cubed minus n. This is going to be equal to 3k all cubed minus 3k by substituting in our expression for n. By expanding, we're going to get 27k cubed minus 3k. And then by factorising, we get three lots of 9k cubed minus k. And this is certainly a multiple of three. Our fourth step is to check the second case. Again, we have our expression n cubed minus n, but this time n is equal to 3k plus 1. So we have 3k plus 1 all cubed minus 3k plus 1. We can expand our first bracket as 27k cubed plus 27k squared plus 9k plus 1. And then we have a minus 3k and then a minus 1 by expanding out the second bracket. The 1s cancel out and we get a 3 lots of 9k cubed plus 9k plus 2k with a 9k minus 3k, i.e. it's a multiple of 3. Our fifth step is to check the third case. Again, our expression is n cubed minus n, and here we have n is equal to 3k plus 2. So we have 3k plus 2 all cubed, and then minus 3k plus 2. This is going to be equal to 27k cubed plus 54k squared plus 36k plus 8 for the expansion of the first bracket, and then we have a minus 3k and a minus 2 by the expansion of the second bracket. This is going to be equal to 3 lots of 9k cubed plus 18k squared plus 11k plus 2. And so it's again a multiple of 3. And so our sixth step is to write down the conclusion. We have that our n cubed minus n is a multiple of 3, because in either case it's a multiple of 3 and therefore we've proven our conjecture. Now for proof by deduction, our seventh step or our first step of this process is to factorise the expression. We have our expression n cubed minus n and we can factorise this by factoring out an n firstly as n multiplied by n squared minus 1. n squared minus 1 is a difference of two squares and so we have n outside and we have n plus 1 multiplied by n minus 1. Our eighth step is to interpret the factorization. These three numbers are all factors of the expression n cubed minus n. So in a numerical context, all we need to do is to be sure that we have a multiple of 3, i.e. one of these factors is a multiple of 3. But notice that we have n minus 1 as one of our factors, n as one of our factors, and n plus 1 as one of our factors. Now these numbers are three consecutive numbers. And this means that exactly one is a multiple of three. If we take any three consecutive numbers, emphasis on the consecutive, then we're going to have exactly one multiple of three. Our ninth step is to write down the conclusion. From this proof method, we also find that n cubed minus n is a multiple of three, except 
This time we've done it via proof by deduction. In either case, we've proved our conjecture. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snapify smiley face and together, let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.